Alright guys, I just had to get ready for your work, but I want to explain what to do next. If you watch part one, you uh, pretty much set up hyperspin, you have, you know, the launcher set up with Super Nintendo or whatever, that was the example, and now you want to know what to do next. So, okay, you got Hyper Launcher working with Super Nintendo and your emulator. Now you got to make it show up uh, in Hyper Launcher properly. So, if right now out of the box, if you go to Super, if you go to Hyper Launcher and go to your Super Nintendo and you pick a game, it'll work. With the exception of now you got to get all the ROMs. Okay, and you know there's different ways to do that. I'm not here to tell you how to get ROMs. You'll figure it out. Do some googling at your friend. So once you acquire, say you get a big ROM collection, okay. Now you want it to work with Hyperspin. Well, you got to understand that Hyperspin runs off a database. So there's a few really cool applications that the community made uh, online that'll help you compare your uh, your ROM list with the database and what it wants. Okay, because the way the database works, it has everything named a certain way. And if you don't have your hyper, uh, your games, your ROMs listed the exact same as the way Hyperspin wants it, then when you click on that game at Hyperspin, it's just going to say, sorry, we don't have this game. You don't want that. So I want you to go on uh, Hyperspin's website, and I want you to find that tool, and that's what you're going to use. They got it, uh, the community made some really cool third party applications. That's what it is. It'll bounce your, basically it'll let you, okay, it'll show you two lists. It'll show you this is what Hyperspin wants and what you don't have. And this is what you have, but it doesn't match, uh, it doesn't have a name for it. So, like, for example, you could click on a game like Super Mario Brothers. You know, it's going to say, I don't have... Super Mario Bros, uh, bro, what's the deal? You're going to click on it, you're going to click like Fuzzy Match, and it's going to look through your database of what you do have, and if it can find anything close, it's going to show it, and then you can just click it and rename it. And then that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to rename all your ROMs, and that's going to be ridiculous because you could have thousands per platform. So after you get all that, I mean, all right, I'm not entirely truthful here. Because you can set it up. You can uh, use a tool that will let you uh, c make a new database or an XML. Basically, these de databases are XML files. So you can use a tool that will generate a whole new XML file for that platform based on how you got them named already. And that will be fine because you'll go into Hyperspan, you go to Super Nintendo, and you pick on anything in that list, and it will work because that list directly reflects what you have. Um, the only problem with that is now whenever you go into hyperspin and you look at the bottom right or yeah bottom left where you're hovering over a game, it'll have like you'll have the really weird, you know, naming convention that those ROMs came in. And that's not very professional. So for me I wanted it to be clean. I wanted to have the artwork for the game. I wanted to have the video for the game. If you're not going for professional uh, look, then don't worry about it. You know, make it look ugly. It'll work. It'll just look ugly and it won't be as clean or organized. But if you want to clean and organize, you're going to have to rename all your games. You're going to have to match the database and make it clean. So in my case, i got to rename all the ROMs. At that point, after all your ROMs are rena renamed, after you've set up your emulator with Hyperspin and Hyper Launcher, and it's going to work. Now, all you should be able to do, all you should have to do is enjoy the fact that it's done. You go into Hyper Launcher, or, my bad, Hyper Spin, you scroll through the list, you find Super Nintendo, you hover over any of the games in there, and click on one just to test, and see if it works. If it does, then you know, you were successful in renaming all your files, if it doesn't, then, you know, I feel bad for you. Now, don't ask me how to get the artwork working properly. Uh, I'm still in the process of figuring that out, but if you want to get artwork for each title or platform, you have to go online, 
you have to go to Hyperspin's website. You gotta go to like um, I forget what the website is called, but if you hover over any uh, title that doesn't have artwork, it's gonna say go to like mumovies.com. You gotta go to those websites. You gotta pay twenty dollars minimum to be a part, uh, to be a sort of like a member. What that's gonna get you is access to their FTP, and you need access to that. No crap. If you're gonna spend money to build an arcade cabinet and you want it to be professional, either you gotta freaking find it online somewhere. Or you gotta pay twenty dollars for this. Um, it's gonna get you access to their FTP. Basically, you log into their FTP server. You see their huge database. They got a giant database of art files. You can just download their whole database. Why not? You know, because you're not that twenty dollars isn't gonna buy you a lifetime subscription. I'm sorry. You're gonna have to do it for like a month or something. You know, twenty dollars minimum. Uh, I'm going minimum because I'm trying to save. Um, so you get on there, you download all you, the art, all the videos, and I'm telling you, this is going to be huge. I downloaded over the weekend in a torrent 90 gigs of art. That's 90 gigs of just art. That's not even games. So have fun with that. So I think this is going to complete my videos for today. Uh, let's you know review. We got Hyperspin. We got Hyper Launcher. We got Hyper HQ. We set up set up Hyperspin to work with emulators with Hyper HQ. You got you downloaded the APK file to make it work with that emulator. Um, you might have to configure the emulator to work right. Say you want it to be full screen. You got to go in the emulator. You got to configure it to be full screen automatically. A lot of times Hyperspin the APK file that you download for Hyperspin to make it work with your emulator will automatically have code in there that says, hey, when you open up this emulator, make it full screen, but sometimes it doesn't. So you can't rely on the APK files. you got to go in there and configure it yourself. And if you find out something weird, like I did this weekend, where an emulator isn't cooperating because it keeps resetting the config back down to something that isn't what you want, you can actually just go in there, set it to the way you want, and then make that config file read-only. That way... Hyperspin doesn't try to change it, um, and then it'll open up always the way, always the way that config is right now. So anyway, it's a lot, guys. You're gonna have to do research. This has been two videos, 15 minutes each, and I've been rambling. All right. So imagine how much like searching you gotta do. You're gonna do a lot, but after it's done, you gotta think about that end product. You're gonna have your emulators all nice and neat. You're going to have all your games, all your artwork. It's going to look fabulous. So I look forward to talking to you guys about it later. For now, I'm going to work. So I'll see you guys.